Welcome to our review on titrations. First thing we need to know then is what is a titration? So when we talk about titration, we're referring to a method that we use to determine the concentration of an acid or alkali through a neutralization reaction. And in order to do this, we use something called a single indicator because that has a clear endpoint. So a single indicator, for example, would be phenolphthalein because at the end of the reaction, it goes from colorless to pink, for example. So it's a really clear endpoint and there's no sort of doubt about when that reaction has ended. So in order to carry out a titration, what we need to do is fill a burette with the acid we're using. We then use a volumetric pipette to transfer 25 centimeters cubed of our alkali to a conical flask. We add a few drops of our single indicator to the flask and give it a little swirl to mix it. You record your start volume from the burette by making sure that your eye level is with the bottom of the meniscus. You then gradually add the acid from the burette to the flask until it just changes color, making sure that you're mixing it all the time. Once that's happened, you record the end volume of the burette, again, making sure that you are at eye level with the bottom of the meniscus. What we've got here is a diagram of the equipment we've just discussed. You do need to remember the name, particularly of the burette, because that has come up in the past as a question. So the big glass tube clamped onto the clamp stand there, that is the burette, and that's where we're going to place the acid. We've got the conical flask at the bottom there, and then we use a clamp stand to hold the burette vertically. What we need to do in our titration is repeat that method until we have concordant titers. Now, the word titer is a measured volume of solution that we're adding from the burette to reach the end point, And the word concordant means that they're within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. Make sure you remember that fact because they could ask you to define what a concordant titer is, which are the readings that are within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. Alternatively, they could give you the results of a titration and ask you to calculate the mean. Now, when you're doing that, you're only using the concordant titers. If you've got any that are outside that 0.1 centimeters cubed, then you don't include those in calculating the mean. To give you an idea about the indicators we can use in titration, there's three in the table here. And the reason that we would use these three indicators is because they have this very distinctive color change. So there is a clear endpoint to the reaction. So if we start off with our litmus and we've got our sodium hydroxide in the flask with it, it will be blue initially, and then it's going to go red in an acidic solution. So we can tell when that's occurred. Phenolphthalein goes from pink to colorless, methyl orange from yellow to red. We've got these very distinct color changes. We wouldn't use something like universal indicator because as you can remember from doing these experiments where you're sitting there with that silly little card trying to work out just what shade of green it actually is, it's not easy to identify when a certain pH is reached. So because of that, we don't use universal indicator. We would always use one of the single indicators. When we come on to need to carry out calculations using our titration, we've got to have known concentrations of a solution to do this. So we need to create something called a standard solution. So when we're referring to a standard solution, that is a solution with a known accurate concentration. So to make that, all we do is we start off with a fixed mass and a fixed volume. So that means we know exactly what concentration we then have in our flask. And we can use that as our standard to then compare an unknown solution to. One of the other favorite questions they have linked into our titrations is how we could improve accuracy. Now, they will have given you a basic overview of the method used in the question. And all you've got to do is critically look at that and think, how could we make this more accurate? 
usual things to look out for are they will have said that they used a measuring cylinder to measure the 25 centimeters cubed for the conical flask. Now, measuring cylinders are always less accurate than the volumetric pipettes. So one way we could actually get an improvement in there is use a volumetric pipette instead of a measuring cylinder. We could talk about the fact that the burette has to be clamped vertically because if it's on a slight angle, then that's going to affect the reading of it. We could talk about the fact that if you've used a funnel to fill the burette, that you've removed that before you actually start the experiment, because otherwise a single drip falling from the funnel partway through would affect your results. So look back at the method they've given you and think what could be done to make it better. And there are some of these that we've already mentioned as we've been discussing the method for the titration. So we said to make sure that your eye line is with the bottom of the meniscus each time that you have to take a reading. Always record your readings to two decimal places so that if the bottom of our meniscus is on a line, then the second decimal place is a zero. Whereas if it's between two lines, the second decimal place is a five. You've got to make sure that you swirl your flask between the actual drops of acid being added because otherwise it's not going to have an even mixture throughout the contents. And then as you get towards that end point, rather than just running it through in one large stream, as so many students do, add it drop by drop as you get towards that end point to ensure it's as accurate as possible. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe how to carry out an acid alkali titration and you can talk about ways to ensure that it is as accurate as possible or make suggestions on how to improve the accuracy of a given methodology.